So what's it actually cost to get ready to go cruising? Well, sometimes there's a whole lot of expense tracking when you're trying to answer that question. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking money today, specifically, what's it costing to get our boat ready to go cruising? Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in woven vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of their products is equipped with UV-stable fade resistance and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Thinking about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference true luxury makes. Visit infinitylwv.com and use the coupon code BG20 for 10% off any area rug. Limit one per customer. So here's the thing. Well, there are a few things, actually. One of the things is, what does it cost to go cruising? And that's an answer that you're going to find all kinds of different numbers out there. Pretty much, if you have a budget in mind, you can find something on the internet that will prove to you that you can go cruising on that particular budget. The same phenomenon seems to happen when it comes to thinking about what it costs to buy a boat and get ready to go cruising. You're going to find every single answer that you want out there. My favorite answer to almost any cruising related question is it depends. And the same is true when you're talking about money. But I thought I would share some of our specifics around analyzing expenses, getting ready to go cruising. As you may know, if you've been following for a while, we have a 28-foot Bristol Channel Cutter that we have owned since 1992. We've done a bit of work on her, we've cruised her extensively a few different times, and we're in the process of doing a total refit to get her ready for our long-term cruise. What this means in essence is that we're, instead of buying a different boat, instead of getting a bigger boat, instead of deciding that we need to spend lots and lots of money upgrading to a larger boat. And I've done a couple of podcasts on why we're not doing that. We actually love our boat for all kinds of reasons. And money is not the least of it, honestly. That said, we're spending a lot of time and a lot of money getting her ready to go cruising. Basically, we're buying our boat all over again in the refit money that we're putting into it. I will say the other reason that I'm sharing this is so that you can understand possibly what might be involved if you decide to go buy a used boat, which there are lots and lots of them out there. It's a great time to buy a boat. Go check them out. You can get into a boat. There are good old boats all over the place and they're worth your time and your money and your effort. But that's a little bit of a digression. What might you be looking at if you decide to go into a project boat like that? or even a boat that doesn't necessarily look like a project boat, but you decide you want to make some changes to it. What goes into that? For us, there are three categories kind of of expenses. I guess there's a fourth as we're talking about it. Uh, I realized that I figured out a fourth and I've been writing a series of blog posts on this. So you can, if you want to follow along, you can follow those. I'm putting out the numbers, the real hard numbers every month. I started in January of this year, but I'm tracking what we are spending on what I call boat projects. So those are consumable pieces of gear. Those are the things like paint and paint brushes and screws and uh, gloves and those kinds of things that you buy that you are going to use up during projects and you have because you want to have them for maintenance wherever you happen to go. There are expensive things like a gallon size can of West System epoxy resin. That's a hundred bucks right there. And then on the far end of the extreme is the three cent screw that we bought. And yes, I track every single one of those. So I think of the consumables that you use and you're putting those, you use those up as you're refitting your boat and getting it ready to go. There are the big ticket items. Uh, And some of them aren't so big ticket and some of them are really big ticket. But pieces of gear, things that are a little bit longer lasting. Uh, Yes, you could go the full extreme and say that anything on the boat is consumable because yes, you're going to wind up replacing almost everything on the boat by the time 
things roll around if you keep the boat for a long time. But I'm talking about things like the materials to make new cushions, the new sails that we've ordered, the new winches, the new electronics, the uh, e even small tools like a new soldering iron. Those are things that we're going to keep and use over and over again. And I consider that to be part of our boat gear. There's also a line item that we have that goes to the miscellaneous expenses, things like gas that we use to get down to where our boat is. For us, part of that money is the rent that we're paying and the electric bills of the house that we borrowed to stay in when we were working on the boat down in Deltaville. We include things like our special Friday night crab cake dinners because we're eating the food that's down there and that's all part of our boat expenses. The, the cost of our slip and the cost of our boat insurance. All of those are what I consider miscellaneous and those are all part of the refit costs getting us ready to go cruising. And then there's the big one and that is time. How much time, how many hours are we putting into this refit? Because it's one thing to talk about the hard cash dollars that we're spending on particular items, but the intangible in a lot of ways is the amount of time that we're putting in. And if you're going to do some work on your boat, it's not only the materials costs, but it's actually the time that it costs you to actually do those projects. So as you are looking for and figuring out and thinking about what it might cost you to get ready to go cruising, you've got to take a lot of those items into consideration. Think about that as you're looking at your numbers. And now I'll share what we've spent for the whole of 2020 so far. So I've got three months worth of expenses. And again, they're broken into, I only have two main categories. So I've got the one which is all the boat related expenses. So it's boat gear and boat projects plus miscellaneous. And then there's the time that we've spent working on the boat. The grand total that we've spent in the last three months on all of our boat expenses is a whopping $12,301.81. This does include down payment on sales. It includes new winches and new electronics. It includes all of those consumables, including epoxy and paint and varnish and paint brushes and the storage unit down by the boat and all of that. But so far in 2020, we have spent just over $12,300 on gear and projects and miscellaneous expenses getting ready to go cruising. The other thing that we've spent an awful lot of is time. In total, we were at the boat for 37 days. You may or may not know that Jeremy's been working remotely. Uh, so all of the time that we put on the boat when we were living down by the boat was after work on the weekdays and then kind of pretty much full time on the weekends. So both of us working there and we were, were looking at a grand total of 306 hours over the last three months uh, of which time we were actually at the boat for 37 days. So just a snapshot your mileage may vary. This is ours. It depends. We have our choices and things that we're doing, but we've spent a lot of time and a lot of money, and we're not quite done with either one of those. In any case, this is all part of what it costs to get ready to go cruising. For us, you may want to think about all the things that go into getting a boat ready to go cruising, and think about that with your budget, because I know that I'm looking forward to seeing you out there on the water and we're going to raise a glass and toast to our good fortune to being out there and healthy and safe. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We're all about all aspects of cruising, the good, the bad, the challenging, the scary, and the mostly awe-inspiring. If you've got something you'd like us to hear about, please let us know. And we love it when you share it with your friends. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.